What are you doing out here? Hi. Hi. Let's go prospecting. Clearly I've been away from the creek for too long. Hey guys, Chris here from Bogus Prospecting. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're an old hat, welcome back to season one, episode two. Today, me and Steve are out on Reedy Creek. Now, Reedy Creek, I think, is Victoria and possibly Australia's favorite alluvial creek for greenhorns to come and cut their teeth at finding some gold. There's a few tips and tricks that I want to give you that will see you succeed a little bit more on Reedy Creek. There's a bit of a myth that this place is absolutely smashed and it's hard to find good gold here. But I have personal friends that have pulled out over an ounce and a half with nothing more than a pan from one crevice in one day. And this sort of gold is still around here. Steve! Steve has been a very gracious friend and he's brought me to our spot. <laughs> and this is what it's all about. Finding spots to go and work on Reedy Creek can be very daunting and overwhelming, but I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you should be looking out for. Reading a creek can be incredibly difficult the first time you ever do it, and it's important to take stock of absolutely everything that's going on here. So let me run you through why this spot could potentially be good. The first thing we wanna look for when we're reading a creek is to identify where the high water is. The high water indicates the flood level, the flood level will tell us where the gold would potentially be moving and if it would be dropping out on top of a potential low pressure system. This is our low pressure system, indicated by boulders, what we assume it is. Is there water running over it to deposit gold? Why, yes, there is. Here is some flood debris. So we've got flood debris here and we've got flood debris all the way up there. These two things tell me that the water is a good foot or more over my head when this creek is in flood and it will be depositing gold on our potential low pressure system. The second thing you want to look for is something like an inside bend or an obstruction. A little bit further up there, which is very difficult to get through the water here, but the, just around there is actually an inside bend, the start of it. The river at this point is coming straight and it smashes into that rock. Now, this is the reason that the river turns here and why it's an inside bend. So river goes straight, hits that rock, comes over here. And if you see this big rock just here, how water-worn, how smooth that rock is, that means all the water that's coming straight in flood hits that, bounces over here and wears on that rock, which means our low pressure system starts about here where these loose gravels are. Now where Steve is, is about where most people have tried working before. You, when you get down there, you can see people have scooped handfuls of gravel out from in between all of these rocks, and they've probably pulled a little bit of gold out, not too bad. But the problem is that with the angle that that rock's on, the water is actually going to be cannoning into this part of the bank. And it's not really going to give it much of an opportunity to deposit much gold. I believe that because of that angle of rock, that this area here is where the gold will start to really accumulate. So that's the basic read of the creek. And the only way we're going to know now is to do test pans, to move some rocks and get our teeth absolutely sunk into it. We have 
have moved a whole heap of rocks in there, including one nice big one. Uh, not the biggest one that we intend to move today, but nonetheless, a good sized little rock. A good sized little rock. Now what we're going to do is take the test pan. The dirt looks really good. Not only does it have those very large rocks that we had to get out of the way, it's also got lots of gravel in it and clay. And that gravel and clay mixture usually denotes that there has been no disturbance of the soil by other prospectors for some time. And it also means that there's a good chance that the gold will be sticking to that clay. And that's the stuff you really want to be working, not the sandy overburden. Reedy Creek, the gold is, again, very fine, mixed in with a lot of black sand and gems. You always got to keep your eye out for gems. And I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen specks of gold there. A lot of them are very small except for those couple of nice big ones up in the top right hand side. And that just means that there is a potential that there could be a very good deposit here. We just have to hunt around this area uh, and see if there is a pay streak, if there is a pocket of gold, if there is something worth really, really going to town on. Let's move some more rocks and find out. Some time later we moved that big thing. Now we can roll that out of the way to roll that out of the way. <laughs> 10 specks in your pan might not seem like very much, especially because it's considered to be ultra fine flower gold here. But that is about what you want to see in pan. 10 specks per pan for me is enough to get the river sluice out. I wouldn't be setting a high banker up for it. I wouldn't be going the extra effort and I might still consider it panning it if there wasn't overly much material to move but we've got a lot of material here so we're going to set up the crocs We're going to clean it out. Now, the test pan that we did only had about four little bits of gold in it, so maybe the gold was in a flood pay layer and not sitting on the clay. So what we're going to do, clean out the sluice, see how much gold we got for around the 30 shovel run, and if it's good gold, we'll keep going. If not, we'll reevaluate and make a different plan. Moment of truth time. That's our concentrates. What have we got in it? Well, that's about it. There was not terribly much gold just sitting there. The dirt looked really good. Um, 
in terms of its makeup it had nice grit in the clay it had nice big boulders mixed in it had nice river gravels in it and there is gold and we're catching ultra fine gold which means that the sluice was working perfectly but but there was something a little bit off about it which was the clay was really sloppy and i found that if you can hit clay that's very it almost resembles like a very soft bedrock. It's very crumbly, almost like a breadcrumb. Um, that sort of clay seems to hold a lot more gold than this sort of sloppy clay. So I don't know whether it's worth continuing to try and dig down and see if there's see if there's a pay layer sitting underneath that clay or to move spots. Here you go, Steve. I think move spots down where there's some bedrock. Bedrock. I like that plan. Let's do that. <laughs> This is a geology lesson with Steve who's going to explain to us where the gems and crystals and whatnot come from Reedy Creek. Okay, this is uh, the normal granite here, and you can see the feldspar, which is the pink. Where it gets very, very coarse, it's like a little pipe here of what's called a pegmatite. You can see some more up here, and see that, that little groove there, there's been a quartz crystal has sat in there, it's been washed out. This is quartz crystals in here probably tin in there and these are just big fragments that have been caught up in the granite but uh, little quartz crystals you get topaz out of this amethyst out of this garnets and uh, you can sometimes find in other places along Reedy Creek huge masses of it so even that boulder over there you can see where it's been weathered and water worn you can see the where the some of it's been left out and you can see little crystals of the pink feldspar, which is called orthoclase, and all the way through that. All of these things eventually break up the boulders and whatnot, and then rush down the creek and all ready for you to dig out of the creek bed um, and get your smoky quartz crystals, amethyst, topaz in particular, tin, of which we've got lots of, and um, some garnets, uh, red ones, zircons, all of that sort of stuff comes out of these things. Moving rocks is obviously tiring and, and hunger building work and if you've been a relatively long time follower of my channel you know that tea with Steve and Michael the Golden Butler is sort of a regular occurrence and apparently this is something that the old timers of old, the old timers of old would recognise. What kind of jerky is this? Uh, beef. Beef. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Not kangaroo jerky. I was kind of hoping for kangaroo jerky. It would have been very Australian but beef, beef I'll settle with beef. I'm not bad. It's really one way or the other with jerky. Either it's going to be freaking terrible or it's good. <laughs> it's good. All right. Let me, let me just catch you up on what's been happening. If you're a long time follower of my channel, you know about my fight with PTSD and whatnot. And there's this very long backstory to this, so I'm gonna cut super short. Yesterday, I had to make a trip to Melbourne to see my father and I had a grouse time down there, but we passed through the exact area that gave me my PTSD. And that has a very long lasting effect. It was a big, big trigger point for me. So today has been a struggle to get out here and do the things that I need to do to film this video 100% for you. But this is the point. It's about coming out here and doing it. And we have the potential now to find some awesome gold. And if not, we're gonna have a good time looking for it. Prospecting takes your ability to adapt a plan and continue to look for the deposit of gold. You're not gonna hit it on your first go. It might take you 10 goes to find a good deposit, but on that 10th go, it'll be worth every single speck of gold because you will have found it and you will have put the work in for it. So, let's scratch out a crack. gem oh yes you've got a very nice little yellow gem there oh it's beautiful that's why we come to Reedy Creek you've got one bit of gold you've got a nice little yellow gem <laughs> here's that beautiful little yellow gem now Steve was telling me that it's probably citrine uh, but there are diamonds out here and that they are also yellow so keep your yellow rocks they could be worth something Steve has found a spot <laughs> <laughs> Packed gravel in a crack 
really really good indication that no one's actually touched it in some time so with a bit of luck steve will get some gold out of that spent about 40 minutes on this little crevice and that's all of the dirt that I've managed to get so I'm hoping there's some gold in it because you know it's the one crevice everyone else missed and on Reedy Creek your luck can change on a dime here we go hey that's not too bad it's not the best pan I've ever seen but for here and for what I've gone through today that's pretty good all right now to get it back across the, the very slippery rock Graceful as a gazelle. Today we have had a bucket load of stuff going on. Um, the initial plan was to show you about how moving the big rocks and finding the decayed granite and whatnot can really benefit you in finding a nice pocket of gold. But the spot that we originally hit, although it had gold, and again, if you move quantity of dirt there, you would pull out some decent gold, didn't have what we were looking for. The bedrock was too far away, it was too deep, and there were some rocks in there that we couldn't move with all the muscle that we have between us, which is, I have to say, quite a lot. But, <laughs> so we moved on. We, we crevassed out some places, we did some checks, we looked, and we couldn't find anything there. And we eventually came down to this spot. Now this spot is, it, it's quite nice. It has been smashed because it's right next to a campsite and we still managed to find a couple of crevices that hadn't been picked over and we found some okay gold. I'm going to show you all the gold that I got for today um, in a minute, but you know what? At the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about coming out here and having a look. You can't win them all. You're not going to win them all. Sometimes you are going to get skunk. I, I must apologize. I know I make it look really easy sometimes coming out here and finding lots of gold, but it doesn't work like that. There might be two or three scouting trips between each video. And on those scouting trips, I bring all my gear. And if I find a good spot, I film it. But more often than not, I'm just like you out there looking for it. We are prospectors, not miners. It's all about the search and the fun you can have bringing friends along and enjoying the great outdoors. It has been one of those days. On the days that you get skunked, it usually means that the gold gods favor the people that you bring along instead of yourself. And today, Steve has definitely got more gold than me. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit that subscribe button, the like button, and most importantly, the share button, because that helps me grow the channel bigger and better for you. Till next Friday, peace, and I'm out.